Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. The fact-checking website Snopes did a hit piece on me this week. It was centered around this animation, which I published on my previous website in 2012. The animation flashes between the 1999 NASA version of U.S. temperatures and the 2012 version. In 1999, NASA showed an 80-year-long cooling trend for the United States, with 1934 as the hottest. But in the 2012 version, they turned the 80-year trend into warming and made 1998 the hottest. Snopes did not mention me by name in the article, and instead of pointing to my website, they pointed to an archived version of it. They also did not contact me. Apparently they're very afraid of giving me publicity and they're not good enough journalists to actually contact me to get my opinion. So let's see what they said in their hit piece. All told, the most significant effect of all these changes came from the time of day adjustments. Collectively, the adjustments served to produce a slightly increased warming trend in the United States record compared to the earlier records. And they got this information from Zeke House father at Berkeley Earth. But the 1999 paper from NASA where the graph was published had a completely different story. James Hansen, the lead author, said, In the U.S. there has been little temperature change in the past 50 years, the time of rapidly increasing greenhouse gases. In fact, there was a slight cooling trend throughout much of the country. Now let's look at the Snopes claim again. They claim that all the adjustments did was make a slightly increased warming trend. But the author of the 1999 paper said there was a slight cooling trend throughout much of the country. Snopes has already discredited themselves, but it gets much worse. These are the actual measured and adjusted trends for NOAA United States Historical Climatology Network data. The blue line is the measured data and the red line is the adjusted data. I calculated these from data taken directly from the NOAA website using software which I've released to the public as open source years ago. As you can see, it's not a small difference in trend. The measured temperature data shows the 1930s as being the hottest decade in the United States. But the adjusted data shows the 1930s much cooler than recent decades. This is a huge change, not a minor change as Snopes claims. These heat wave graphs are taken from the most recent National Climate Assessment. And they show that heat waves during the 1930s were much hotter than any recent heat waves. This tells us that summers were much hotter during the 1930s than any recent summers. So when NOAA cools the 1930s like this with their adjusted data, that should set off some alarm bells. This text was in the 1999 NASA paper, which I generated the animation showing the changes from. James Hansen said, Empirical evidence does not lend much support to the notion that climate is headed precipitately toward more extreme heat and drought. The drought of 1999 covered a smaller area than the 1988 drought, when the Mississippi River almost dried up in 1988 was a temporary inconvenience as compared with repeated droughts during the 1930s Dust Bowl that caused an exodus from the prairies as chronicled in Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath. So NOAA and NASA are erasing an important part of U.S. history when they make the heat of the 1930s disappear in their adjusted data. Now let's look at this claim from Snopes again. All told, the most significant effect of all these changes came from the time of day adjustments. So I took the NOAA data and generated this graph. The blue line is the time of day adjustments and the red line is the total adjustments. The time of day adjustments are about 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit total, but the total adjustments are about three times that large. The total final adjustments are more than 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And particularly interesting has been since the year 2005, the total adjustments have been very large, whereas the time of day adjustments are very small and they're actually in the opposite direction. This shows us once again that the Snopes claim is incorrect. I sent this graph over to Zeke House, father at Berkeley Earth and to Snopes and Zeke responded with, well, you just don't know how to do the math. Once again, my code is open source. It's very simple. 
Hundreds of people have looked at it, and no one's ever found anything wrong with it. But Zeke's argument is difficult to deal with because Snopes isn't going to go off and try to do the math themselves. So here's where the smoking gun comes in. I figured out a way to prove that the adjustments are wrong without doing any calculations. We're going to zoom in on Texas now. Texas is one of the most heavily tampered states by NOAA. The measured Texas temperature data since 1895 shows cooling, but the adjusted data shows warming. And the measured data shows 1921 has been the hottest year, whereas the adjusted data shows it not particularly hot. So what we're going to do now is focus on southwest Texas temperature data from the summer of 1921. Texas' longest heat wave occurred during the summer of 1921, when Encino had 157 consecutive days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit from May 8th to October 11th. That's a lot of heat for NOAA to erase. Once again, this is the measured Texas temperature data, with 1921 as the hottest and a strong cooling trend. And this is the adjusted data with a strong warming trend and the heat of 1921 largely diminished. Now let's compare that to the NOAA graph from 2012, which was captured by Anthony Watts. In NOAA's 2012 version of the graph, there was no warming in Texas, and 1921 was still the hottest year. And Anthony Watts also captured this article from the San Antonio Express News, dated April 23, 2012. Research shows Texas is not warming. Once again, there's no warming trend, and 1921 was the hottest year. So this data tampering in the current NOAA graph has occurred since the year 2012. Now is where I'm going to show you this smoking gun. All of the data on this graph is taken directly from the NOAA data sets. There's no calculation being done on my part. The yellow line is the daily maximum temperature data for Encino, Texas for July 1921. The white line is the unadjusted monthly average temperature taken directly from NOAA. The blue line is the time of observation bias adjusted monthly temperature taken directly from NOAA. And the green line is the final adjusted average temperature again taken directly from NOAA. During July 1921, the name of the station operator at Encino, Texas was Jay Guerrero. He took his observations that month at 7 o'clock in the morning. This tended to make his measured temperatures a little bit too cool, so NOAA adjusted the time of observation bias adjustments a little bit upwards. You can see that the blue line is one-tenth of a degree higher than the white line, which was the measured temperatures. But here's where the problem shows up. Look at the final adjusted temperature. It's almost 5 degrees cooler than the raw or time of observation bias adjusted temperatures. And incredibly, it's cooler than all but two of the days during the month. What kind of average is this? The only way this could happen legitimately is if NOAA thought there was something seriously wrong with the thermometer at Encino, Texas, and that it was reading almost 5 degrees too high. In that case, they would have homogenized in temperatures from the surrounding stations. So let's take a look at those stations. Encino had three neighbors which reported the full month of July 1921. They were Eagle Pass, Alice, and Falfurius. Now we're going to look at the adjustments at all three of those stations. This is Falfurius. Just like at Encino, they've made a huge downwards adjustment in the final temperature data. And once again, it's cooler than all but two of the days during the month. And once again, I'm going to remind you that these are not calculated data. These numbers were taken directly off the NOAA website. It's already pretty obvious that the final adjusted temperatures are fake. But let's look at Encino's other two neighbors. This is Eagle Pass. Again, we see the same problem. The final adjusted temperatures are way too low. They make no sense. And at the third and final neighbor, Alice, Texas, we see exactly the same thing. The final adjusted temperature is completely nonsensical. So the only two possibilities for legitimate temperature adjustments are time of observation bias, which obviously isn't what's going on here, 
or homogenization, which also doesn't work. Put quite simply, NOAA is committing massive temperature fraud. There's no two ways about it. And if these adjustments are actually peer-reviewed as Snopes claimed, that would indicate a much broader problem in climate science. Here's the total current adjustments for Texas being made by NOAA. NOAA cooled Texas' hottest year, 1921, by 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how they made Texas' hottest year disappear and turned a strong cooling trend into a strong warming trend. This is not science, it's fraud, and they're erasing America's important history. There is no way to get around the fact that these adjustments are fraudulent. And there's also no way to get around the fact that Snopes is not a legitimate news source. They failed to contact me, they didn't do any good research, and they printed a bunch of garbage. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.